Hi, I'm Cindy Holt, and today we're going to do a little coloring workout. I don't know about you, but I love to color, and to be able to color on something you can actually wear, I think is perfect. You can match everything with your outfits. Now, I get my transfers that I make the pattern with. I get them, you can collect them from the internet through three, uh, free art, or you can actually purchase art. I draw a lot of my own. I take my own photographs and convert them to line drawings because you know everybody's got the app on their phone to edit and it usually has a line drawing or sketch uh, filter in there. So once I have my toner based transfer, not an inkjet, a toner based, and I go to my local copy store and do it on their copiers because they are toner based. So we're gonna get started. I have my sheet of glitter clay here and I put the transfer down and just lightly rub it on. And let me, let me remind you also that especially if you're doing portraits, you need to reverse the image left to right or letters. Now, this is my secret toner fluid. This is my transfer fluid extraordinaire. It's generally called hand sanitizer because it's got ethyl alcohol in it, and alcohol is what causes this to transfer. You want to cover the entire sheet as quickly as possible so that the paper doesn't curl up on you. That's also why you'll see that I have a very small selvage around the edge of my pattern so that I'm not wasting a lot of clay and a lot of my precious hand sanitizer on blank paper. Now I've got this covered. You should be able to see now that you can see the pattern in here. I'm just gonna rub it lightly with my fingers from the center out because I wanna move out any air bubbles that I can see in there. While that's cooking over here, I've got a completed transfer here. You notice that it is now on a smooth tile. That's because when I take my templates and start working with them, it's gonna hold the clay in position and not drag the clay and distort my pattern. So I'm gonna keep an eye out over here. This is looking, you wanna watch for the paper to start getting light like it's getting on the corners here. That means that it's evaporating. We're gonna add a little bit more. Now I call this larger than a pea size. I don't know what you would call it. And I just rub it on with my fingers once again. Remember how we pushed the air out before? You wanna watch for any air bubbles. I'm covering the entire sheet again. Okay, kitty. How you doing? That was a big bubble I just got out. There we go. All right, so let's come back over to my completed transfer here while that's still cooking. I love to use this one particularly. And I'm gonna set it here right on the edge because of course I've worked pretty hard to get this transfer so I wanna get as many pieces out as I can. I'm gonna take my craft blade and just drag now. I think the secret to doing this is I'm holding the blade loosely. I'm not trying to force the blade or drag the blade through the clay. And that way it follows the line of the template for me. There we go. I think I can get another one over here if I pull this around. It's a little bit like doing a puzzle trying to get these to fit right. There we go. I can see my line through here so I know where I am. I'm looking at my other transfer over here to see how it's doing. Perfect. Again, a very light hold on, on the uh, craft blade. Okay, ooh, I think I've got room to cut out a couple of earrings here too. I like to do my earrings in a little bit different shape than my pendant, I don't know. Ah, how's that? I like that one. And yes, I always end up with one pair of earrings and two pendants, but two people are gonna have to fight it out for the earrings, I guess. And how about right there? Am I good on all my lines? I think so. All right, and I'm keeping an eyeball on my other one cooking over here. Now all we need to do is peel the back up, and there's our pieces. Now let's check over here. If you think that it might be time to check your transfer, all you need to do is re-wet it again a little bit. go that's better and then you can peel it up perfect okay we'll let this dry a little bit now that we have our pieces over here this is what we're going to do with it we're going to take our blade 
slide it underneath so that we lift that clay without distorting it, okay? And we have a little bit of a rough edge here, so I'm gonna lay it down, take my blade, just kind of clean that up a little bit. Now, I like to have a gentle curve to these so that they're not lying flat. Can you see that there? And what I use is this five inch metal bowl. Of course, you can use any sort of bakeable bowl that you have to do this. And I'm just putting this on here loosely. Let me take the other one. Okay, earring, let's get you out of the way. I would bake the earrings on a ceramic tile so they stay nice and flat. And you can see these are pretty tight on there when I pull them up. So this would go on like this. Now, these are ready to go into the oven. And I'm gonna set this over here for now. And we're gonna get to the fun part. So take my earrings and I'm gonna put them back on the tile because they're ready to go that way too. Oh, let me get that off, okay. As you can see on the pendants, I have a black piece on the top to just add interest. Again, I'm gonna pull over my clay, and I like to add a texture to it. This is a magic texture that I got. Somebody gave me a piece of, and it took me two years to find out. It's shelf paper. And I have it notched here on the edge because I'm an old photographer, and that's how our sheet film was, so that I know which is the side I like best. I'm gonna spray it lightly with some water. You notice I did that away from my craft table so I don't get everything wet. And it's gonna go right through the pasta machine. And give us a beautiful texture. Nice and clean, kind of techno looking. I'm gonna take my cutter. This is my largest circle cutter. And cut out a circle. This is gonna go back onto the bowl. Just like this so that I have curves going on this a little bit too. Now you notice these are cut in half. I find that it's easier to cut the half while it's on the bowl than to try to cut it and pick the pieces up, they get distorted. So now the top is ready to go. You see how the necklaces hang and you can't see a bale on it? That's because I have something on the back that we call the Jan Montarsi Easy Back. Let me show you how those are created. Really fun and really easy. I'm gonna take a sheet of clay and let's see, let's take this circle cutter. I'm gonna cut out a circle. Peel it up and I'm gonna take this little circle and cut out two notches. The notches are up towards the top as you can see. This will go onto my hollow bead maker on the smallest one it can go on. Press it down, everything's ready to bake now. Once it's baked, now the fun begins. We get to color. Ooh, my favorite part. Take your alcohol-based pins, and just to be begin to color in your image here. Don't worry if all your lines are not clear because that's what I use a small detail black pen for. And it's kind of surprising. You can think you have a lot of lines missing and then you, you fix the first line and all of a sudden the others all disappear on you. It's, it's a really interesting phenomenon. To bake your clay, always follow the directions that are on the manufacturer's package and allow these pieces to cool on the bowl before you remove them. That way you don't uh, have any distortion going on with the pieces. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of color here and you can see the sparkle in the clay comes right through the transparent ink here. There we go. Now say I had this piece completed. All I would need to do is take my back piece and glue it on here. Just use a little bit of, I prefer a gel instant glue like this. And let's get that on. Center it on here. There we go. And then take your easy back. And you see I have some, several here because I'll cut these out of extra clay that I have and bake them because I have been known to make pendants before and forget to make the bale. 
And I'm gonna take my tweezers here because I don't like to get the glue on my fingers. And I'm gonna add glue along the top and the bottom, but not on those little cutouts that we did. And that's gonna get pressed right on here, just like that. Just so that these edges meet with this, it makes it look a little neater. Once that is dry, you can take your cording. You have plenty of room here to slide it right through that bale that you've created. And just add your coils to the end here, a little bit more instant glue if you want, and press these on, and you're good to go. You have your necklace completed. And I do the same thing for the earrings. I just use a smaller circle cutter to cut out the back as shown on the earrings there. And we're all set. One more thing that I'll point out to you. This is glitter clay. And you can see on these two pieces, the one in my right hand has been glazed and the one in my left hand hasn't. It's up to you how much you want the sparkle to come through. So there we go. There's lots of different transfers that I have over here that I've used. I collect them like crazy. I create them like crazy. Have fun, color. It's a great workout for your brain.